Welcome to New in the Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. I have some news regarding the import of uh, our packages from AliExpress into the EU. It seems our Chinese friends regrouped and found a way to improve things for us. So half of my packages are still coming through as normal with code marks because there is a double taxation happening here in Romania. The electronic system is not operational yet. So they charge VAT a second time when you receive the package plus a two euros handling fee. But the other half of the packages started arriving grouped into larger bags through EU routes uh, from the Netherlands, for example, without having to go through customs. So I think that's a plus because it avoids the double taxation that was happening here. Plus, I get more packages at once, less hassle for me. I'll keep you updated in future videos on the status of these packages. But let's start the mailbag video with these two heat shrink tube label tape cassettes. I use these cheap replacements from AliExpress on my brother label printer and I use that printer a lot recently. I did the uh, electrical wiring in my apartment and I kind of labeled every wire which made me use up all of the heat shrink tube label cassettes I had in stock so I had to order more. There is just 1.5 meters of length inside one of these cassettes so you can imagine it runs out pretty fast especially with all of the wasted uh, material between each printed label. There is a trick that I use to avoid wasting too much label in between prints. I just print three or four labels at a time with the text spaced uh, with four or five space characters on the same label. This way I avoid wasting the margin uh, label that the printer wants for every start and end of each label. I then cut the resulting labels with scissors and you can save quite a lot if you print many labels. Next up I got myself seven of these 0.96 inch 80 by 160 full color TFT modules. I believe the interface on these is uh, SPI and the uh, control chip should be ST7735S. And I saw this uh, super interesting clock project based on these display modules. So I decided to order them and give that project a try at some point. I'll see if I can include a picture when I edit this video to show you what I'm talking about. It looks super nice and uh, it, I definitely would like to build something like that. Uh, but it will be a challenge for me to get that done by the end of uh, this year with so many projects happening here in the lab. Luckily, um, all of the work for that project is, is already done. So I just have to build it. In any case, these are pretty cheap, so there is no harm in uh, ordering these in anticipation of that project. And if you're watching this video, there is a high probability you're also doing PCB design. So let me introduce the sponsor of this video, Altium, one of the most advanced PCB design softwares on the market. Altium has some pretty advanced features which enable collaboration among multiple team members. So there is no wonder they are a popular choice in the professional PCB design world. Check out the special link I placed in the description below to sign up for a free trial of Altium. My next product is pretty well known guest of the show, the JST SH connectors and its brothers, uh, the pigtails that I often use in my projects. These are also included with the products I sell on my Tindy store, hence why I need to often restock on these. And if you're interested in them, same as always, there will be links included in the description below. And while you're checking out those links, why not click the like button because it's free. It only takes you a second to do it, but it really helps the channel. Next up, I have a series of products that mount on a DIN rail. And I'll start with this project enclosure, which kind of looks like one of those industrial type PLC controller boxes. But uh, this is super nice if you want to build a DIN rail mounted project. These come in a variety of shapes, configurations and sizes. This particular one has these uh, pre-cut slots uh, on the side, so you can just uh, snap these uh, depending on the uh, connector location you have on your PCB and you can make room for some wiring to your PCB connections. Then you also have these uh, pre-cut vent holes on uh, both sides. And if you install this on a uh, horizontal DIN rail, like you should, you get natural convection cooling as the air is sucked in through these vents. Now, there are several vendors offering these types of uh, enclosures uh, on AliExpress or Alibaba. And I suspect the majority of the cheap ones are exactly like the one I got here. But there are also slightly uh, more expensive ones, uh, which I suspect will have slightly different dimensions. I'm talking about maybe one or two millimeters differences because... For example, I found some online drawings of this enclosure from a particular manufacturer uh, from China, but the actual one that I, that I got from AliExpress had some minor differences in the order of a couple of millimeters. So I would recommend ordering this first, get it in front of you and then design your PCB. 
this is supposed to be flame retardant ABS plastic, but the uh, quality of the molding on this one is not that great. I'm, I'm just going to assume that the <laughs> there are several uh, factories doing these and uh, they probably just copy each other. I'm also going to assume that uh, the, the more expensive ones are better quality. So if you source this from a different vendor, it probably cost you more, but you're probably uh, gonna, going to get uh, a product of higher quality. I'm working on an exciting new project, which will be put inside one of these boxes. And I'll share more info on that once I get the PCBs made. Until then, check out the link in the description below if you want to order one of these. The next product is another interesting option for those looking to DIN rail mount stuff. This is a set of clips that attaches to a uh, DIN rail and then provides a couple of these uh, mounting holes uh, to attach various stuff. You could attach a PCB, although I'm not sure you would want a bare PCB on a uh, DIN rail, probably only if it's enclosed in a bigger insulation box, but you get the point. You, you get some mounting points by simply clipping uh, these to a DIN rail, so I figured I'd order a couple of these just to keep around in case I need them. I remember at one point here in the office building where I have my lab, I did some uh, wiring and organizing in the uh, multimedia box panel, and I wanted to attach a network switch to a DIN rail and a set of these clips would have made my life much easier for sure. They are fairly inexpensive, they come in different sizes, so well worth uh, getting a couple of these. Next, I got myself a DIN rail mounting Raspberry Pi 4 enclosure, and this guy is made entirely from aluminum, and it has the uh, option to install a uh, small cooling fan on one of the uh, side panels, although I'm not sure I would want to use that feature just because these small fans can get very loud. And my plan is to use this for Raspberry Pi running my home assistant service at home, which doesn't load the Pi as much uh, to get it very hot and ha having a, a noisy Raspberry Pi at home, it, it would probably disturb me. Now, after receiving this product, I'm having some mixed feelings about it because of the way it mounts. I mean, it's nice that it's built entirely from a single uh, piece of aluminum, but there are no like spring clamps on the DIN rail like we have on this uh, plastic enclosure. So I would assume you either have to slide this from the side of the DIN rail, which is often impossible to do if the DIN rail is mounted inside some sort of a, an enclosed panel. Even if you manage to do that, you wouldn't be able to then easily take it out after you've installed it. So I'm not sure what to think about that. They do have this, uh, this cutout in the enclosure, which probably allows a little bit of flexing in the enclosure uh, so i don't have a din rail right now uh, here in the lab so i can test this uh, to see if you can actually clip this the normal way to uh, to a din rail if this flex is enough to do that it's not plastic so yeah there's very little flexibility in this aluminum enclosure so it's not an ideal mounting solution i'll just have to get a din rail and uh, test this to see if, uh, if it really works. Inside the box, you also get a, a set of screws, couple, uh, three small heat sinks, and the side panels. I also got some heat sinks for the Raspberry Pi to keep it nice and cool passively. And I ordered this aluminum set, which was uh, advertised as having the right size for the Raspberry Pi 4, but also this uh, ceramic type set, which uh, it is a first for me. I've never seen these uh, ceramic type heat sinks before. I believe the advantages would be that they are non-conductive electrically, but other than that, I don't see any benefits to using ceramic heat sinks. Surely the thermal conductivity can't match the one from the aluminum heat sinks, and they would get less total surface area just because they can't manufacture them with lots of thin fins. I, I would assume they would be very brittle if made as thin as aluminum. So not sure what to think of these. Let me know in the comments below if you've used these uh, ceramic heat sinks before and if there are uh, any other advantages that I'm missing here. Next, I have a single board computer and this is the Orange Pi Zero. This is by no means a new product on the market. It's been out for years. Uh, maybe it had a revision at some point, replacing the all winner system on chip with a newer version. But overall, I think uh, the board stayed the same. And this is the lower spec version with just 512 megabytes of RAM. And the reason why I got this is because I want to build a project that runs specifically on the Orange Pi Zero. There is this OS image that bundles uh, the software that I need to run 
in a single image and that project runs on the Orange Pi Zero, hence why I got one of these. And my next item will give you more insight into this uh, project. This is the SA818 walkie talkie system on module. As the name implies, this is a walkie talkie module that only needs some simple external circuitry for the audio input and output as well as some control signals. By building a custom carrier board for this module with the required circuitry and connecting it to the previously shown Orange Pi Zero, I can build a complete uh, local repeater running the Echolink software. Because I recently got my ham radio operator license, I could use such a repeater to get in contact with people uh, from the different networks using just my low-cost Baofeng radio. There are ready-made versions of this repeater that you can purchase online. I believe there are even versions designed for the Raspberry Pi Zero. So lots of options to choose from, but I decided to build my own hardware because it's fine. I like doing this kind of work. I got the UHF version of the uh, module. I think that's what the U uh, in the name stands for. And I also ordered a couple of these uh, small antennas that I uh, plan to use with this module. So I will be having an SMA connector on the carrier board and I will be installing one of these small uh, antennas. These should also be UHF band and they should help build a pretty compact repeater module. Same as always, you'll find links for these items in the description below the video. Next up, I have a few items that I'm gonna be using part of my home automation system. I have some more of these uh, Zigbee temperature slash humidity sensors. These are the SNZB-02 modules from Sonoff. Uh, I've used these before, they run for a very long time on a CR2032 battery and I needed more because I want one of these in each of the rooms of my apartment. Next, I also got the Sonoff Mini R2, which is this Wi-Fi relay based on the ESP8266. I'm already using a bunch of uh, Shelly relays that are also based on the ESP8266. Those are working great in my system, but I want to explore this option from Sonoff as well because, well, it's half the cost of the Shelly relay and it should do pretty much the same thing with uh, very similar internals. There is just one small downside uh, that I see right away. Uh, these are slightly bigger than uh, the Shelly relay, at least the, the enclosure is, and it would be harder to integrate this behind a, an existing uh, wall socket. Next, I got this uh, PIR sensor, which is a 240 volt rated unit. And my plan is to use this sensor as a switch input for the Wi-Fi relay and uh, have the Wi-Fi relay control a light fixture based on the input from this sensor as a switch input for the Wi-Fi relay. This way I have Wi-Fi Home Assistant compatible mains powered PIR sensor and I'll have to run some tests to see how this solution behaves but I'm trying to stay away from those commercial PIR sensors because they're pretty bulky, uh, they use a lot of space so by using uh, this little guy I can hide everything behind the light fixture and it's gonna look much nicer. The benefit of making it Wi-Fi enabled and Home Assistant compatible uh, is that I can then adjust parameters on the fly and interact with other sensors. Like I could have the light turn on based on uh, several other sensors based on ambient lighting or I could just adjust the on time with a, uh, a simple variable which is pretty convenient. Who knows, if things work nicely maybe I'll even create a product integrated everything into a uh, small enclosure. Until then you'll find the link for these in the description below. And the last item in today's video is this current sense transformer, which is also related to my home automation project. I was contemplating the idea of monitoring the energy usage on the main power input. So I want to do some experimenting with using one of these transformers to measure current. Uh, I'm also thinking about experimenting with one of those integrated circuits that do energy measurement. One of those would probably make my life easier and I think I have some of those on order from AliExpress uh, but you'll get to see that in a future mailbag. If I just try to use one of these current clamps and uh, read it using an, an ADC, I would then also have to measure voltage and run the uh, calculations and monitoring of the energy in my firmer code. So it's a balance and trade-off. Using one of those uh, energy monitoring chips would do all of that internally. That was all for today. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I appreciate your feedback in the comments below. Don't forget, you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month or you can simply hit that like button, which is free and helps a lot. I'll see you next week. Oh, and I almost forgot I'll add a playlist on screen with all of my previous mailbag videos. There are well over 100 videos in that playlist. 
check it out. You might find some interesting stuff in there.